Hey everybody, Sir Tap Tap here. Um, I've heard some people ask me for more Abyssrium videos, and uh, I don't mind doing more Abyssrium videos, but the kind of the main thing is I don't really know what to talk about unless there's a new update. I usually do, you know, a new video explaining what's in the new update, and well, that's about it. I uh, it's kind of hard to do a video with all of the hidden fish now because you know there's so freaking many. But uh, one thing I thought I would do is review kind of the changes that have gone on since Cheetah Mobile took over. So if you didn't know, um, the game used to just be by Ide Idle Idea Factory. And I forget if they even had a publisher, but now it's made by... Well, it's published by Cheetah Mobile. And uh, Cheetah Mobile's made some questionable decisions, in my opinion. Um, that's right, Parker. So... I think one of the worst changes they did was the Supreme package used to have this harp seal. Uh, it looked kind of stupid, and it was never worth a hundred bucks in my opinion. Um, I don't really think most of anything. Um, I don't think any of the in-app purchases over twenty bucks over this advanced package here is really worth it, in my opinion. Uh, anything over about twenty bucks for a single purchase in a you know a mobile game, any game really. Uh, Kind of gets me bleh. But, um... Anyway, the, the Supreme Package used to be a harp seal. And, uh... I think you can see that in Manage. B but, if you miss the harp seal... You can't get it anymore. It was It's a $100 purchase that is now impossible to get. And now there's a new $100 purchase. Get away. There we go. So you can pay $100 to get mermaids, and like, a lot of people, when they saw the mermaid in the app thing, they're like, Oh hey, how do you get that, how do you get the mermaid? Like, everyone was confused and thought it was one of the Christmas fish. No, you gotta, you gotta pay 100 real frickin' dollars to get mermaids, and... Like, $100 in-app purchases, on it, in and of itself, is pretty exploitative in my opinion. Rolling, time-limited, $100 in-app purchases, that's, that's really gross. Um, less gross, thanks for like almost knocking everything over, Parker. Um, less gross, this Valentine's Day fish, um, is only 10 bucks. The, the prior ones were like 30 bucks to double the, the candy earning. And it really, a lot of the things that Cheetah Mobile does feel exploitative to me, and I really, really don't care for that. So like, in the old things, like, if you really wanted to get enough candy to get everything, you would see this $30 in-app purchase. It's like, hey, we're going to double. And another thing is that it says 200% increase. It actually means 100% increase. Um, Idle Idea Factory is not an English-speaking like company, and they've never improved the localization. It's it's garbage. It's um, It consistently uses increase incorrectly. Like, the, when you get see Supreme Package there, it says 110% increase. That sounds like you get double and then 10% more, right? Well, no. It means a 10% increase. Like, you basically subtract 100% from most of the things in here. It sounds like it's additive, but it means multiplicative. And, yes, hi, Parker. Um, yeah, it's just gross. Um, something I liked about Abyssrium, and is still kind of the case, you don't really, there isn't really a major need to buy gems. Um, look at those sharks escorting. The Great White's ex escorting the uh, pink whale shark there. Um, it is, you don't really... There's some skills that are pretty important, but I don't really feel like you need to pay to proceed. Um, but, uh... Yeah, overall, I'm not entirely happy with where in-app purchases are going. I don't mind the heart sunfish, the 10 buck one. I think that's sort of reasonable. I wouldn't buy it myself, but... It's not too bad. Um, I, I really wish... It especially bothers me that they allowed, you know, these inaccurate, um, misleading things to be on something that you pay for. Like, imagine paying $50 and you get, a, you know, and you think you're going to get 110% increase, but you only get 10 That sucks. That really sucks. Um, but aside from the in-app purchase thing, um, events have also been a bit different. Uh, the Christmas event, I don't think anybody was particularly happy with the Christmas event in terms of the costs. I know a lot of people that quit before they got the uh, the Snowflake Whale. Um, the, Christ the 
Valentine's Day event is more reasonable, as I said in the video on that. But it's still 600 candy or 6,000 candies for the Heart Whale. Um, I really liked that in the Halloween thing. I think it was a cap of like two or three thousand. So it had about the same cost to reach the end. But if you wanted to get a bunch of duplicates of the Bone Whale, which was really cool, um, it didn't really cost that much. And I really like that. I think they should have it designed so that, you know, maybe there's a set amount that you need to unlock everything. Because, you know, I'm a collector. I like to collect everything. So, you know, I'll gladly work up to that amount. But once I've unlocked everything, I don't think I should be punished for wanting duplicates. Like, just let me buy dupes. Because, like, when you... Just like the normal fish. Once you... You have to work up your way for, like, weeks to get, like, the whales and stuff. But once you've unlocked the whales here, they just cost exactly as much as everything else. See? You, see, uh, it took me quite a while to get 70 total fish. But now I can get sunfish, you know, just like anything else. And that's cool. I, I think unlocking should be more of a thing than, you know the per-purchase cost. Because unlocking things is fun. Paying large amounts of currency is not fun. Um, overall, though, I think the, the Valentine's event cranks it back down to a more reasonable level. Um, I do think the Halloween event had the best fish overall. It had some cool real fish. It had a really good theme. Like, the, the bone fish worked really well. The ghost ones were kind of meh. Um... There's also, well, there's a couple other things. So, I think first thing is one of the biggest issues with how the game's progression works. Um, once you reach a certain point, um, there's really only one way to progress. And I'm going to show you that way right now. That's, that's all you do. You, you cast the two skills, Song of the Moon and Delicious Food. And uh, let's just see how much we get out of that. We got, like... 80 BZ Vitality. Here's the thing. I collected my three hours of passive Vitality just before starting this. I got one BZ. One BZ. So, Idle Vitality, completely meaningless. Um, the Volcanic Eruption, not completely insignificant, but not amazing. Um, anything under one BZ is complete garbage. So keep that in mind. Um, for 800 gems, which is a lot... I get 21 BZ. That's a fourth of what I just got for casting my two skills that I can recharge by watching an ad and waiting like a maximum of seven minutes. So one fourth of me waiting eight minutes is 800 gems. Like this, there's frankly no reason to use any of the magic tab except for Spirit of Life, and that's only if you either have a surplus of gems, like I kind of do, or if you're hunting for candies. So, these just feel like they're there to mislead, or possibly they just didn't know their own progression curve and things got messed up. Um, there's also no point in... I can't... I don't have one to get yet, but um, the photo quest is also... I'd guarantee it would be under 1BZ. It would probably be BY. You know, a whole letter down. Just completely meaningless. Uh, same with the free vitality. The 211 BY, that's nothing right now. Th there's really just... And the the same is true for the opening the chest. The vitality you get in there, it's completely worthless. So, once you've gotten past about Z vitality, there's really no point in anything at all except for using Song of the Moon and Delicious Food. And, you know, a, a slight bonus from Volcanic Eruption. Um, it's pretty boring, and there's just not much to do. And also, after a while, so like, once you hit Z Vitality, you get a fish pretty much every cast of delicious food. And that feels pretty good. That feels like, you know, okay, I finished the game, and I'm just gonna buy a bunch of fish. As an end game, I don't mind that. I think that is a perfect end game for a game like this. Because you just fill your aquarium, and you're, you're done. And that's enjoyable, and I thought that was fine. But once you get to about BA, things start slowing down again. And they never pick back up. And so it just gets slow and slow, and adding new fish becomes an extreme grind, so 
every time there's a new update, I'm like, oh dang, I'm going to have to get new fish and that's going to cost a lot of time. And uh, there's nothing I can actually really do to speed this up either. I can double it with 100 gems for 15 minutes. Um, this 10% increase, if I bought everything in here, let's look here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I could get 60% more vitality, less than double. And I would have to spend um, $200 for less than double permanently. Uh, that's not really... Like, you can't even buy your way through it. Not that you should be able to. Oh, they fixed the oarfish's animation! I'm sorry, I, I did not know that. They, the oarfish used to have the worst animation in the game. But it moves like a, like a freaking sea snake now, finally. Um, they have been... Gita Mobile has been doing some good things. There's some bad animations and stuff that I've always been waiting for them to fix. And it looks like they finally have. Um, content-wise, like, the new fish they've added, they've all been pretty good. Um, there's a few ones that weren't as good, but, uh, overall, in terms of content Cheetah Mobile's added, I do like it. It's just, the progression gets so slow, and it really does feel like they want me to buy things, but it also kind of feels like whoever is designing, like, or, like, saying how many... Uh, like setting the goals, it doesn't feel like they actually play the game. Because here's my thing. I've been playing this game since it came out. Um, I have, you know, basically the guide for the game. You know, I'm kind of the person that everyone asks, you know, how do I get this? Um, there's fish I can't get. Uh, not to sound egotistical, I don't think that there is anything in this game that I should not be able to get. As somebody that has played this game for what, like, six months now? Um, I know, like, all of the secrets, I, like, made a freaking guide. Um, like, I don't think there is any content that should target people beyond myself. Because, like, why would you do that? Like, why would you have content that nobody except for, like, completely insane grind people have, have gotten access to? Like, let me show you what I mean. For the coral, um, you need to buy... You need... DL vitality to get the giant green kelp. It's basically impossible without cheating. I've seen a couple people with giant green kelp, 99% sure they're cheating. I know one guy with CS vitality that I, I think maybe, maybe they got that legit. I know a few people that are struggling at D CD vitality, and it's even worse than where I'm at now. It's just not practical to get there. It's just the game isn't designed to let you do that. They just added what they thought was going to be like, oh, hey, we're going to add to the end game, so to speak. But you can't get there. You can't do that. Nobody can get these. That sucks. Like, why would you add content that no one can get? Like, just leave it unreleased, in my opinion. Like, don't just dangle. Like, there's cool fish. Like, there's the thousand-year-old blue whale is, like, freaking huge. It has really cool animations. There's a gulper eel. There's, um, what else is there? There's blobfish. Everybody likes the blobfish. Uh, but you can't, you, they're impossible. Like, it's not even really an exaggeration. There is probably less than ten people in the world that have not cheated that can get those fish. And those people have played, frankly, too much of the game. Um, and I, I don't know if Cheetah Mobile thinks that they're making whales out of us and like that we're going to spend a lot of money because they make it really hard to get stuff because Cheetah Mobile kind of seems like that kind of company, frankly. Um, which is also probably why they changed the name to Tap Tap Fish. Um, please ask them to change it back to Abyssrium, by the way. I absolutely hate the new name. And no, it's not related to my name being Sir Tap Tap. Um, if you didn't know, Tap Tap is actually an enemy in Yoshi's Island. There's these these little, basically invincible um, spike ball dudes. That's what my avatar is. But yeah, Tap Tap Fish is just so dumbed down. And if you look at the rest of Cheetah Mobile's uh, games, you can see why they picked Tap Tap Fish. It's they got a bunch of boring, safe, plain old games, and Abyssrium was never like that. Like I'm pretty cynical on mobile games, but Abyssrium was always good. Abyssrium had an art style. It had, you know, a theme. It was never too exploitative. I never liked 
the $100 in-app purchase, but it was a good game, and it didn't feel too scummy. It just felt like a good game, but I don't think Cheetah Mobile really sees the value in that. And the worst thing is, like, <laughs> if they're trying to bleed us for cash, they're not, frankly, very good at it, because, like I said, um, if I wanted to go to DL Vitality and, like, um, you know, say I had a, a billion dollars in the bank, and I really want that giant green kelp, I, I can't buy my way to it. it. It doesn't work that way. Like, you really can't buy your way to victory in this game. Uh, so, uh, the grind just doesn't make any sense at any level. So, I don't know if they're, like, programmers don't play the game, but it just feels like they're kind of detached from the user base and, like, don't realize what people can actually do. So, uh, I really hope they improve that. I really hope... Oh, one last thing, as far as Cheetah Mobile. Um, after Cheetah Mobile took over, one of the first bad signs was they added new fish, and they were pretty boring as far as new hidden fish were concerned. And the worst part was... Um, ugh, there's so many fish. Um, butterfly, idol... No, where's the... Where's the angelfish? There we go. The Peppermint Angel, not even the worst one, owned 30 angels. So I had to buy like five of each angelfish in order to get that. That's boring. That is a boring unlock. Like, I really like the unlocks in this game. Like, take a picture of a damsel five times. You know, it's like, you know, it's, you buy a certain amount of fish. You, you take pictures of the fish. You, you do silly things like tap the corner a bunch. Um, and those are okay. But, like, the Naso Tang, that is the worst one. It's not even a good-looking fish. It doesn't look very good. Own 50 Tangs. That's, like, many, many letters worth of vitality. Like, I want to estimate that's, like, 5 to 10 letters worth of progression, which is a lot. And that's just for one fish? I only got one of that stupid fish, and it took me... Oh, I could have gotten so many things. But instead, I, spent 50, I got 50 Tangs. Like, it, it, that, it just sucks. And they need to just, like, sit back and realize it's not fun. It doesn't really promote monetization. Like, you can't pay your way to 50 tanks. Like, it's not even, like, a greed thing. It just doesn't make any sense. It's just bad. Um, it just, you can only buy 50 tanks really with time. So, it just doesn't really feel like they really understand what they're doing. So, I'm still pretty hopeful for the game. It's it's still fun, but I do think there's a bit of an attitude problem at Cheetah Mobile. So, I really hope they kind of review things and are like, okay, okay, maybe we should like make fish actually obtainable. Maybe that would be a bit more fun. Also, they keep making... Abyss Room was always a buggy game. It's it's still buggy, even after it got bought. That kind of sucks. Also, there's some weird errors, like... Um, this is a paid-only fish. That should, be, that should be in the package fish. It shouldn't be in the event fish. It also miscounts how many event fish I have. That's This is another paid fish. Paid fish should not be in the event fish category. But it also has me... I'm only missing two. Two fish. But look at the top there. There's a, a phantom fish. And it's just miscounting. I actually counted the, the number here. I have 36 fish. It just doesn't... Or I have 37 fish, rather. It just doesn't... I don't... It's just bugged. And the game is still pretty buggy. But yeah, as you can see, that... That triple, like, the casting those skills used to get me, like, a free upgrade. Now it gets me, like, two or three correlate levels. And it only gets worse from here, from what I've heard. So, yeah. I really hope they kind of revamp their, their strategy. They, they kind of realize, okay, normal people that play less than Sir Tap Tap need to be able to, like, actually get something. So, maybe we should, like... <laughs> make these fish actually obtainable that would be that would be preferable 
If, if you could just make this game actually possible, that'd be great. But yeah, overall, it's like, it's hard to get extremely mad at them, because the new stuff they add is good, but like, the system stuff and like, the unlock requirements are bad. And, and it just has that veneer of greed to it. Um, but they don't seem completely horrible either, because like, they did do things like, they fixed the Orfish's animation. Anyway, this got a bit longer than I intended it to, but that's kind of my review of the current state of Abyssrium. Uh, not a disaster, but could certainly be better. Uh, just need some more thought put into it before they start, you know, saying, hey, go get 50 tangs. Like, that's just dumb. And, uh, yeah. Hopefully that was uh, insightful or useful or whatever to you. Uh, if you have requests for, like, a specific video, uh, let me know in the comments, I guess. And, um, hate to keep plugging, but my site does cost money, so if you want to contribute to my, uh, Patreon, you can, uh, do that at patreon.com slash or tap tap, or there's a little link in the description. And you can get pictures of Parker! Yes, you can! Yes, you can! Yes! <laughs> um, and, uh... You can also do things like you can view some of my videos early if you pay in five bucks, stuff like that, and be in my uh, uh, little credits thing. Um, but yeah, that helps pay for the server, for the site. That The server got pretty expensive, but uh, the site's doing pretty well now. Um, but yeah, if you have requests, let me know. I... Um, everyone asks about the Marlin. I, I have to tell you... There's, there's really not a secret to the Marlin. It's just a poorly designed unlock that is extremely rare. Um, but yeah. That's my review of the current state of Abyssrium. And uh, hopefully things get a little less rocky. And uh, the game, game keeps being great. That's right, Parker. <laughs>